case presentation of anterior cruciate ligament tear. A 36 years old male presented in physiotherapy department with the complaint of pain in the anterior region of left knee. He encountered a road traffic accident about five months ago from where the problem started. Pain and swelling was present at the injury site after accident, which subsides with the passage of time. Now the patient presented with pain in left knee, especially while sitting on his knees. There was no associated past medical and surgical history. He was active with no such habits of smoking. His diet was normal. He had normal sleep-wake cycle. There was no history of any allergy. His vitals like temperature, blood pressure, respiratory rate and pulse rate were in normal range. The review of systems showed no involvement of any systemic issue with this pain. There was deep aching intermittent pain presented at the anterior aspect of the knee. Onset of pain was sudden and the severity of pain was 5 out of 10, according to numeric pain rating scale. Pain was aggravated by sitting on knees and was relieved by taking painkillers. The main difficulty that was interfering his daily activities was pain while sitting on knees. His sitting, standing and lying posture was normal. But he feels some pain on the anterior region of left knee while sitting on his knees. There was not any visible joint deformity, erythema, or muscle wasting. Overall alignment of knee was normal, no swelling was present at knee region. On palpation, the skin temperature was normal. Skin sensations was intact, but tenderness was present at the anterior region of the knee. MRI report of about three months ago revealed that there was ACL tear at femoral attachment, buckling of PCL, grade 1 tear of medial meniscus, and grade 2 tear of lateral meniscus was present. The range of motion of the right side was in normal range. The active knee flexion of left side was almost 110 degree. The passive knee flexion of left side was almost 120 degrees. The knee extension of left side was slight limited. The manual muscle testing of right knee flexors, extensors, hip adductors and abductors showed grade 5. The left knee flexors and extensors was in grade 4 plus. The gait pattern of the patient was normal. Differential diagnosis include knee dislocations, meniscal injuries, collateral ligaments injury, posterolateral corner injuries to the knee, patellar dislocation or fracture, femoral and tibial or fibular fracture. Latchman test and pivot shift test was positive. Valgus stress test, varus stress test, posterior drawer test and McMurray test was negative. The short-term goals was to manage the pain and to improve the strength of the muscles. The long-term goals was to improve strength and proprioception, reach the best possible functional level and decrease the risk for re-injury. Neuromuscular electric stimulation and ultrasound was used to improve the blood circulation, thus enhancing the healing process and reducing pain or discomfort. Manual therapy techniques including patella mobilization, quadriceps strengthening, muscle energy techniques, and proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation techniques was performed. Stretching, mobility and strengthening exercises was performed to restore the movement and maintain the adequate strength and stability of the knee joint. Following exercises was guided to him, heel slides, passive knee extension, prone straight leg raise, quad sets, 
static cycling, wall slide, balance and reach exercises, and knee stabilization exercises with 7 to 10 repetition, 3 times per day. About 85% of his pain was subsides after 3 treatment sessions. Hit the subscribe button to watch more such videos.